Hey everyone, this is Michael from Cold Mac here, and today I'm going to show you how you can install iPhoto for iOS on devices that aren't supported. So this past week when iPhoto for iOS came out, everybody was excited about it, and you know, it was such a great app and everything. But there's a couple of different problems. First of all, you couldn't use it on the iPad 1, and secondly, you couldn't use it on the iPod Touch at all. No generation at all. And I found this to be rather interesting. I own an iPad 1 as well as an iPod Touch. Those are my two main devices. And I couldn't use iPhoto, and I thought, wow, that's that's too bad. So I was looking around. There's actually a way that you can kind of work around the system and get iPhoto on both a first-generation iPad or an iPod Touch, and it's pretty simple. So the first thing you're going to need is iPhone Configuration Utility, and you can get this on support.apple.com. I'll have a link right below the video so you can download this. It's a just a small file, and it's an application for OS X. Once you have it, you're going to want to open it up and here it is iphone configuration utility if you can't find it you can just search for it in the spotlight and here it is so what you're going to want to do is first well obviously you're going to need to have downloaded iphoto for ios in the app store for 4.99 and then you can go up to the applications tab right here and click on add once you click on add you're going to want to go to your home directory in this case michael steber and then from here you're going to want to go to music and then itunes and then iTunes Media, and then Mobile Applications, because in the Mobile Applications folder, this is where iTunes stores all the apps that you have on your iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch when you download them. So in your Mobile Applications folder, you're going to want to find iPhoto, and then all you have to do from there is hit Open. So once you select iPhoto, it's going to show up under your Applications list, and from here, I'm going to just plug in my iPod Touch. That's what I'm going to show it to you on today. But once again, this also works on the first-generation iPad as well, and I tried it on there. So once you plug in your device, you can see on the side here, the device showed up as MS iPod, and I can click on that. And from here, if you go over to the Applications tab, you're going to see all of the different applications that you can install on your device, as well as ones that are installed. So this will be anything under the Applications tab that I showed you before, and anything that's already on the device. So if we scroll down here and we see iPhoto, you can see I can hit Install. And once I hit Install, it's going to freeze up like this for probably a minute or two while it installs on your device and you're not going to see anything happen you know, you'll probably get a spinning beach ball and iPhone configuration utility is not going to respond and once it's finished doing this it's going to take you know maybe a minute or two on your device you're going to see the application show up and that's really all there is to it so as soon as iPhoto finishes installing here I'll take a look at my iPod and I'll show you that it actually works and how it all ran so now you can see if I go over here you'll see that iPhoto is installed on my device and I can open it up right here and it opens just fine like you'd expect any other iOS application to there's no weird crashing there's no real slowdowns either although I have to say it is a little bit slower than it is on the iPad and there's no warnings or anything it works just fine like it was always meant to be on here so you'll see that I can edit photos just like I normally would if I go into an album here let's say I want to edit this picture I can hit edit and everything works just as you'd expect. So I can go over here like this, I can maybe apply a vintage look to it. Uh, let's try something like that. And you know, it all works. Then maybe I wanna look at some of these other tools here. Uh, let's change some of the color balances. Let's bring that up a little bit. Let's make just a couple adjustments here. And you can see how this all works pretty well and pretty much how you'd expect on any other device. So there you go, now I can share this picture and let's share it to Twitter. So there you go, that's about it, and that's how iPhoto works. So it's just how you'd expect, and nothing's really different than on the iPhone or the iPad. So there's how to run iPhoto on both the iPod Touch as well as the first generation iPad. Hopefully this cleared up any frustrations you had about not being able to run it on your device. Of course, if you have anything that you'd like to see me do a how-to on, make sure to send me an email. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.